everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. We're back again with our APJ live stream, which is going to go for another few hours. But today we are running this uh, whole live stream for 24 hours. And today I have a very, very amazing person, Simon Bennett with me. He is totally amazing. You should know him. He is one of the, he is the founder of OWASP ZAP, Z Attack Proxy. He's been contributing to OWASP and all the open source projects for many, many years. Uh, I would be sharing his details in the comment section. You can reach out to him and one of the most easiest person to reach to. Let me be honest. Thank you so much, Simon, for joining me today and agreeing to be part of the live stream. Thank you um, so much for inviting me, Fandana. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. So everyone, today we're going to be talking about everything of Wasp Zap, what it is. Some of you know about it. Some of you don't know about it. So for everyone, there's so much, even if you know about it, there's so much to know. Okay. So what I'm going to talk about today is OWASAP and yeah, a good place to start. I'll explain everything, what I'm going to talk about. Um, I'm going to talk about, give an introduction to Zap. Um, the various ways you can use it, when you should be using it, and the kind of key steps you can go through, and an introduction to the automation framework, see how much time I've got at the end, and what's coming up soon. Now, this is not just going to be um, me talking to the camera and displaying some slides. I'm going to be demoing Zap as well, uh, because it, it's if you're, if you're talking about a tool, it's always good to show the tool. So. I'm going to start off a uh, nice, simple question, a uh, kind of useful one, what is Zap? So Zap is a tool for finding vulnerabilities in web applications. And what we're really talking about here is custom applications. So some of you may be aware of kind of network type scanners, which work by identifying versions of known applications and identifying old versions that are known to have vulnerabilities. Um, so looking for things like CVEs and the like. So it's very, they're very much fingerprinting applications. That's not really how Zap works. We do a few that a little bit, but really what we're concentrating on is custom applications, applications that potentially no one's ever seen before, certainly no security researchers have seen. So what Zap does is it acts like a malicious attacker trying to attack your application in the way that um, the, the bad guys will do. So it is an OWASP flagship project. Hopefully you all know about the Open Web, Open Worldwide Application Security Project, as it's now known. Um, and the flagship projects are the most mature and the, most, um, the, the ones you recommended to uh, try out first. And like all OWASP projects, it is completely free and open source. It's also cross-platform. So Zap is written in Java. If you can run a JVM, JVM on your platform, then Zap will run. And it is well maintained. And I kind of make a point of saying this because uh, I try and keep a track of um, all the different web scanners out there. And a lot have come and gone in the last uh, 12, 13 years since we, we released Zap. But unfortunately, not very many of them have stuck around and um, people carried on um, contributing to them. So a lot have come and gone, and you may well find um, quite a few open source web scanners out there which just aren't maintained and you know, haven't been touched for a long time. It is what we believe to be the world's most widely used web scanner. So what are the different ways that you can use Zap? One of them is the desktop GUI, and this does require Java to run, um, but you don't actually have to have Java installed if you don't want to. You can run um, Zap in a Docker image, and we're using uh, Web Swing, so you can actually control the Zap desktop um, in your browser, uh, which is pretty impressive technology. We also have a heads-up display. Um, this is something which is unique to Zap, I think. And what it does, it actually brings um, Zap into the browser. So the browser is your window into the application. Um, what Zap does, it actually injects content into it so you can see the status of Zap and you can control Zap. Automation is a very significant thing for Zap. Um, and this is where we think um, Zap is probably used. Um, we know it's one of the Zap strengths and we think this is where Zap is used most. We do have a set of Docker package scans. Um, so we have the baseline scan and what this does, it will um, explore your application using one or both of the spiders, which I'll talk about in a bit. And then it will just passively scan your application. We also have GitHub Actions. Um, so if you actually want to 
integrate these using GitHub Actions, we've got the same um, Docker package scans available, and so exactly the same as the uh, as those. I mentioned it, the automation framework. It allows you to control Zap with a, a single YAML file, and we're actually migrating the package scans to use the automation framework under under the covers. Um, so it's very powerful and very flexible. Um, but we're kind of focusing on the main things that we think people want to automate. And last but definitely not least is the um, API and daemon mode. So Zap can run with the desktop GUI or it can run in daemon mode. Um, and you know, obviously you don't have a, it's headless then and you can control it via the API. The key steps um, when you're doing automated testing anyway, or even manual, um, some of the basic manual testing, uh, first of all, you need to explore your application. Zap, by default, doesn't know anything about your application, so you have to explore it. And this is a key step, because if you don't explore it effectively, then Zap won't be able to attack the things you don't find. So there are lots of different ways of exploring. Um, and the first one is manual. And this is where I think it's time for a demo. Now, it may look a little bit complicated, um, but it's actually more complicated than it appears. Uh, we've got an option here to show all of the tabs. So if I do that, you'll see there's loads more options available, uh, but we try and, you know, we kind of hide those. We hide things that we don't think you need immediately. Now we've got three immediate options here. The automated scan. So this is where a kind of point and shoot option, which I won't show now because I want to show Zap in a bit more depth. We've got a, an option for manually exploring the application. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose an application called OWASP Juice Shop. If you're not aware of Juice Shop, then you want to play with it. It's a really fun application and it's a great way to learn about vulnerabilities. What you need to do is you're exploring an application manually is you need to configure your browser to proxy through Zap and to import and trust the Zap root CA certificate. So what we do is we can launch browsers from Zap and we can launch any modern browser, which can really comes down to Firefox and Chrome and maybe Safari. But I will launch the browser. What it'll do, it will display Juice Shop. And I said, if you haven't played with Juice Shop, it's um, a really fun, it's a deliberately vulnerable application and it's a great thing to have a play around with. So this is where you explore your application and do whatever you want to do. So, and that is all I'm gonna do for now. So what you'll see is if you go back to Zap, we actually have a whole lot of things down here in the history. So what has happened is that browser was proxying all of the requests through Zap and we can now see them. So they're all displayed in order and you can see information about the methods, the URL, um, uh, response body size, things like that. Now, if you actually select any of these requests, then you will see, you can actually see the request and the response. So you can see everything about these requests and you can do that in the sites tree or the history tree. The other thing I will point out now is that down at the bottom, you'll see these little flags alerts. And if I go to the alerts tab, you'll see we actually found a whole lot of potential problems. But we scroll down, we've got a more interesting one here. We've got um, a vulnerable JavaScript library. Uh, we're using retire.js, which is another great open source project, and identify that the jQuery version 224 uh, library is vulnerable. So even though we haven't done any attacking at all, just by exploring the application, we have found some potential vulnerabilities. So that was manually exploring the application, and that is obviously great if you're happy to sit there and you want to you know, go through the application and explore how to use Zap as well but it's not so great for automation because you don't want to um, explore the application manually. If you have unit tests, these um, that actually drive a browser, these can be really great because as long as you can proxy them through Zap, it's the same as, it's very similar to you actually proxying your browser through Zap, proxy your unit tests, and that allows Zap to see all request responses and build up a good set of data of the kind of expected parameters to send. If you haven't got those, or even if you have and you know they're not complete, uh, API definitions and other definitions requests are a great way to import and to explore your application. So Zap supports OpenAPI, Swagger, GraphQL, SOAP, 
but you can also import um, requests in HAR format and from log files as well. Uh, but we also have spiders. So if you haven't got unit tests or API um, definitions, or if you have and you know they aren't complete, then the what you probably have to rely on is the spiders. So I will switch back to Zap. We can actually invoke these in various ways, but what I'll do is just, where I usually do it is right clicking on your selected target. And as you can see, we've got various options here. I'll select the standard spider and we have some options and we've got advanced options as well, which I won't bother going to now, but I will just kick that off. And you'll see the spider, you see the progress down here, uh, which I'll go up and down. It is actually pretty quick. I think it should take about 20 seconds on this application. And you can see all of the requests that it makes and you'll see some of them are actually out of scope. So we don't want to go off the target at, um, domain because otherwise we could end up trying to um, spider the whole internet. That's gone too far. What you'll see, so you can see all of those, but what happens is these requests and things found will be put into the sites tree. Now, hopefully you'll be able to see that there are some of these um, lines here have a fuzzy little icon, which you won't have seen before. And that is actually a spider, a black spider. So you can see that these requests have been found by the spider and not while you're exploring manually. If you're automating, then this isn't so interesting. But if you're doing manual testing and you think you've explored the application and then you use the spider and it finds some of these things, then you'll know for some reason you haven't um, found everything manually, which could be interesting. We can then see it's different report format, but again, we can see all the information that is there and you can see all the details, the get requests and everything else. So the automation framework is a really powerful way of actually controlling Zap and making sure that you know exactly what Zap is doing. That's all, that's it from me, uh, that if you'd like to get involved, big contributing guide um, and, you know, just get in touch with me if you like it. That should be easy to find. I think Vandana is going to um, share the details, uh, my contact details with you as well. Uh, thank you and hope you found it useful and please have a play around with Zap and use it to find vulnerabilities. Thank you so much, Simon. It was a really, really informative and wonderful session, especially the, the way you showed uh, Zap and uh, it's easy for people to use it. And I'm sure you're going to get a lot of requests after the session around Zap. Hopefully, yep. Uh, before we end the session, I would also like to uh, say, how can people contribute to Zap? So there's lots of ways. Um, so we've got a whole contributing guide and that covers everything. Just liking the Zap accounts and the um, GitHub, GitHub repos, something as simple as that actually is really good. It helps the Zap profile, uh, but we've got, you know, there's things like documentation, giving us feedback helps, uh, translating Zap. So Zap is one of the very few um, security tools that is internationalized. And this is something which I think is really important because I think all tools should be available in the language of the people who use them. So Zap is internationalized and is being translated into 30 odd different languages. Um, I said, very unusual for security tool. I'm very proud of that. Uh, but we've got all the, go all the way to coding and there's loads of things people can do. There's always way more than we can, we can manage. And we've got um, it, good, good first issues on GitHub right up the way to it's really serious developments. And we actually, um, talking about, we've had loads of students get involved either through Google Summer of Code or through other initiatives or just coming to us directly. So we're very happy to mentor students. And we've got a student hall of fame on the website um, showing all the, the major projects that students have um, worked on. Thank you so much for agreeing to be part of the Big Fix 2023. Thank you again for inviting me, Vandana. It's great to see you again.